A service was held at the Ukrainian Catholic Cathedral in London this week to show solidarity with people of Ukraine. The Red Wednesday event takes place every year to raise awareness of the plight of persecuted Christians, but took on a special significance this year as it was the first since the Russian invasion of Ukraine. The event also highlighted how Christians are persecuted in countries such as China, Pakistan and Burma. And to discuss this, I'm joined by the Right Reverend Kenneth Nowakowski, Bishop at the Ukrainian Cathedral, uh, the Catholic Eparchy of the Holy Family in London. First of all, Bishop, thank you very much for joining us. Could you tell us exactly what Red Wednesday is and how you celebrated it this year? Well, thank you very much for having me today. Red Wednesday is a very special initiative that was initiated by the organization Aid to the Church in Need in 2016, and it places special emphasis on bringing to light the plight of persecuted Christians throughout the world, but also in general, people who are persecuted for their religious beliefs. And this year, Aid to the Church in Need uh, asked if they could hold this event at our cathedral in, in London, and we were very grateful to have that. So we started off with a divine liturgy or mass, as sometimes it's referred to in the West, and I had the honor of uh, having with me Archbishop John Wilson and also one of the bishops of uh, Catholic bishops of Nigeria who had come to talk to us about the situation in his diocese where on Pentecost Sunday one of his churches was stormed and 41 people uh, were killed that Sunday. Mm. A persecution of Christianity is growing around the world, but also intolerance <coughs> is growing at home. Are you seeing much of this in the Ukrainian communities? Well, here in the United Kingdom, where we've received over 160,000 of people from Ukraine fleeing harm's way mm. and being welcomed here in Great Britain, hearts and homes have been opened, and we've been very grateful to the people of the United Kingdom, especially here in Great Britain, for doing that and for offering this charity. We've uh, also been able to establish a special Ukrainian welcome center at our cathedral that assists people who are looking how they can access the NHS, how they can get their children into school, mm. um, jobs, this type of a thing. And we've been very grateful for the greater community for opening their hearts and their homes to us. Right, because this will have been the first Red Wednesday service since the Russian invasion of the Ukraine. What significance has that had to play? Well, nine months ago was the full-scale invasion of Russia in Ukraine. And of course, Red Wednesday uh, has shown um, how community can stand up and stand together with Ukraine for people who are persecuted, regardless of their religious faith or ethnic background. And Red Wednesday, I think, highlighted, highlighted that. We had one of our guest speakers, Archbishop Angelos of the Coptic Orthodox Church here in Great Britain, and he spoke eloquently about what Red Wednesday signified. Of course, Red Wednesday, as you showed a photograph, our cathedral cathedral was lit up in red to show the blood of the martyrs, of the men and women who have died mm. because of their faith. But when we think of Christian martyrs, we tend to think of the church fathers, uh, but people are still being martyred for the Christian faith today, aren't they? And obviously you've had many ecumenical relationships over the last few weeks, especially with Red Wednesday. From speaking with your uh, contemporaries who are worshipping abroad, where is Christianity persecuted at the moment and what, what, how does that manifest itself? Well, we can see Christianity persecuted in many ways and in many forms, of course, overtly in countries where Christianity is outlawed, um, but also where, you know, wearing Christian symbols um, such as yourself today, uh, how do people react to you? How do people respond? Well, it depends. And, and I think that, you know, we think of uh, Christians being persecuted, especially, especially in the Middle East, mm where the number of Christians has diminished, especially in countries like Israel, um, Egypt, uh, Lebanon. People are leaving because of uh, not feeling safe to be able to practice their religion openly. So what is the future of Red Wednesday? I think the future of Red Wednesday continues every year to help people, first of all, remind them to pray, mm. to speak out, and to take action that can inform their neighbours, their governments, about the need to support and to assist those Christians who, and people of faith who are persecuted. 
And if people are watching or listening to this today, how can they get involved in Red Wednesday and the projects around it and the charities around it? Well, I think they certainly can uh, access the site of Aid to the Church in Need, which founded this movement, worldwide, international movement. That would be certainly one of the best ways that I could think that people could become involved. And, of course, many uh, Ukrainians will be displaced right now, and today is the first Sunday of Advent. What significance does that play in, in the run-up to Christmas for a lot of people? Well, for us, it signifies a couple of things. Uh, yesterday was the 90th anniversary or commemoration of the great famine genocide in Ukraine where over 4 million people lost their lives because they were being killed just because they were Ukrainian. And uh, when we approach Advent on the Western calendar, for us, we're still two weeks away oh, of course. Uh, being on the Julian calendar. But it is a time for prayer, for acts of charity, and to be thankful for everything that we have here and perhaps to share that with others. We've got a brief moment if you'd like to give people a message of what Advent is all about, because every year we seem to forget that Advent isn't actually Christmas, it's the Lenten period in the lead-up. Could you share some words of wisdom on that for us? Well, for, ad for us Eastern Christians, Advent begins on the Feast of St. Philip and is a time of prayer and fasting and almsgiving to prepare ourselves, our hearts, so that we can come to the cave, come to the place where the star is shown us. Advent is a journey, mm. and we should take this journey seriously and prepare ourselves for welcoming Jesus Christ into our hearts. And I think the church gives us this gentle reminder to do something, to prepare not only ourselves commercially, but spiritually. But there's a message of hope in there, isn't there also? How can people embrace that message, especially Ukrainians who are uh, in the UK at the moment and wanting to return home, or even Ukrainians still in the Ukraine um, suffering persecution, etc.? Well, I think hope is given because you've invited me on TV to speak about them to, so that we don't forget about persecuted Christians, so that we don't uh, forget about those who are being persecuted just because they're Ukrainian. And the hope is there because we keep that message alive. And we wait for the coming of Jesus every year to celebrate his birth. So what special uh, prayers will you be saying this, this Advent period? Well, I think our special prayers will, of course, be for those who are here in uh, the United Kingdom, for especially the sponsors of those who are, mm. have opened up their hearts and their homes, for government workers who have been graciously helping these uh, Ukrainian people settle and, and find a temporary place of refuge. We'll be uh, praying for those who still don't know Jesus and who are still seeking him. Yeah, yeah. Thank you very much for your time today. Really Thank you, Deacon Kevin.